I'm going to show you how to perform push-ups so that you're keeping your whole body in tension and maximizing pushing force as much as possible, which is going to help transfer to movements such as the planche. Let's get into it. So let me show you all of the key points of the hollow body push-up, but in a standing position first before we apply them into prone position to perform the actual push-up. First thing is the hands. So what we want to do with the hands is, want holding them up, you want the fingers to be pointing forwards rather than pointing out or in. That's going to influence the movement of the elbow. It's going to help ensure that the elbow is moving more in a natural path. And it's also going to ensure that the shoulder blade keeps in a nice, strong and stable position too. So fingers pointing forwards, that's going to be very important part of the setup. So the next thing that we want to look at is a movement called protraction. This is essentially where the shoulder blades come as far forwards as they can. This is going to be the strongest position that you can be in at the top of the movement. So it's important that we start there. The reasons being, when you're in this position, you're gonna feel that your deltoids are as tense as possible and the upper fibers of the pecs are also in as much tension as possible. Not only this, there's a wonderful muscle here called the serratus anterior, it goes from the rib cage into the outer edge of the shoulder blades. It's also going to ensure that the serratus anterior is stimulated too. And that's gonna help you to optimize your pushing force as much as possible. So once we've done protraction, we now need to ensure that the rib cage is stacked. This is going to ensure that the abdominals are now in a nice strong position, they're in tension, and we're not gonna get any energy leaks through the stomach. And then once you've got the rib cage down and you're in that protracted position, you then need the tailbone down. As you stack the rib cage, it might start to naturally do that, but you just want to ensure that that is the case and you're going to feel that your glutes are now super strong and that's going to prevent any energy leaks from around the hip region. So you're in full control of your body at this point. Once you've done that, quads, they need to be in tension when you are in prone position and we'll achieve this also a bit more by pointing the toes when you're in plank position. So let's now go through all those points in prone position. So here we are, prone position. First thing I'm gonna do, fingers are pointing forwards as we talked about. Now you'll see that I'm in all fours. I'm not gonna rush into push-up position. I'm gonna break this down to ensure that I am in the perfect position before I go. So fingers are pointing forwards and then I'm also going to rotate the elbow pits forwards too. So just to show you this, I'm gonna rotate, fingers pointing forwards, elbows forwards. Now the other thing is, my shoulders, I'm gonna make sure that they come forward slightly until I feel pressure under my knuckles, okay? If the pressure is behind my knuckles and it's more on the heel of my hand this means that the elbow is probably going to bend back and if the elbow bends back this means that we're not going to be able to call upon those muscles as much as if the elbow was stacked over the wrist so it's really important that that happens and so make sure that your pressure is under the knuckles if you don't feel that just so you can see from the side just make sure that you lean forwards until you do. So the next thing you need to do is start with the cat's position from the cat cow. And this is exactly how I perform push-ups. When I've set my hands, I then just go, bring the pelvis down, tuck that under, and then I round out um, or push as far forwards as I can. And then in this position, I'll be ready to go into plank. You'll notice that what this does is it brings the rib cage down so that we're contracting the abdominals. It brings the pelvis down so that the glutes are gonna be in tension. And it's also going to, from the bottom up, help contract the abdominals too. So this is a nice, strong position. Once you've got into that position, it's then time to sort the legs out, get the legs into tension. The most important thing is I go one leg at a time because what I commonly see is people just rush into this and just go like this. And you'll notice what happens is pressure leaves the hands and we've not got that stack. So we need to ensure that we're keeping the stack. One leg goes back, very minimal movement. In fact, no movement. And then once that leg goes back, the other leg goes back and I'm resting on my toes. I bring them together, hips thrust down. I just make sure that everything is in tension. And then we are in the perfect starting position for the hollow body push-up. Now something to note, when you're in that position, you should already be shaking because this is gonna be a whole body movement. This is not a CrossFit version of a push-up where we're trying to get as many reps as possible. 
This is us trying to perform a push-up with every single part of the body in tension. Because when we start to transfer this to more advanced calisthenics moves, that's essentially what we need to happen. We need the whole body to be in tension. So we're going to establish that tension first, then we perform the movement, which is what I'm going to show you now. Now that I'm in my hollow body plank, this is commonly where people start to go wrong. They'll start to focus on driving the elbows out, back, or whatever. What happens there? We lose the tension through the hands. You're now seeing that this is a common theme. We need to keep tension on the hands under the knuckles. So how do we achieve that? We focus on driving the shoulders in front of the fingertips. Okay, that's the path that we take. As you allow the shoulder blades to come in front of the fingertips, you're lengthening the front delts as much as possible and you are lengthening the pectorals a lot more than if the elbows were to go back and your shoulders were to end up even with the fingertips. So let me just show you what that looks like. We're in position, as you can see, stepping back. Now I'm focusing on shoulders going forwards, keeping tension through the back and I'm feeling the pressure under my knuckles. Once my chin touches the floor, I've basically completed the descent. The next part is the ascent. So what do we need to ensure that we do? Basically, you need to ensure that your shoulders are still in front of the fingertips and you push through the knuckles and push the back straight up into towards the sky. Okay, that's what you want to focus on doing. So if I just go through that now, as you can see, I'm going through each step as I always do, and then descend, push back, and I round out the shoulders to get that protraction in before I go again. Now, another key part of this is the elbows. You probably won't need to focus on your elbows so much because you've set this up so well, and that's a key part of the setup. You don't need to think too much about various components of the movement, but the elbow should be going back at a slight angle. So for the ascent, what we're going to do, plank position, we're gonna ensure that we go down with a nice hollow body, shoulder blades in front of the fingertips, and then I'm gonna finish by pushing through the hands and ensuring that the shoulder blades and the upper back travels towards the ceiling, and I round out slightly so that I'm finishing in this nice hollow body plank. So here we go. So you'll notice I've essentially returned to the same position, keeping the legs locked, and it's really important that we maintain those key components of the movement all the way through. And a key point is my shoulder blades are always going in front of my fingertips, and that's going to ensure that my forearms stay, stay stacked over my wrists. So there you have it guys, gymnast and the push-ups. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments, otherwise I'll see you in the next video.